Alright, another video length disclaimer. This video will also be shorter than usual because season 2 was quite boring. I have no clue if it picks up the pace or not, but this episode really doesn't have much going for it except that Korra is a bitch. Tenzin and his family left for a vacation at the Southern Air Temple while Korra remained in the water tribe. I was going to make a comment like, oh, so they just left Mako and Bolin in the water tribe? Won't their parents be upset or worried? Oh wait. A dangerous trip to the South Pole? Count me in. Oh my god, that was so beautiful. I've said before that Atla is definitely better than Korra, but one thing improved is the fucking music, man. There's so many banger tracks, and if there's any track to perfectly encapsulate the air nomad freedom, it's this one. I'm a huge metal guy, so not many classical tracks stick out to me, but this one sure did. Please accept these gifts. This is an ancient airbender head shaver we've refurbished just for you. Oh. Okay. Yeah, I agree with Tenzin. This shit looks like a scalping torture device rather than anything else. I would not trust anyone to shave me with that. <sighs> Excuse me, a little help here? Sorry, I thought you were the servants. We're Tenzin's brother and sister! Avatar Aang had other children? The world is filled with more airbenders? We're not airbenders. Oh. I'm so sorry. RIP. Tonrock, what do you want? I heard you're taking Korra to the South Pole. I'm coming. Absolutely not. You're a distraction to Korra and a hindrance to what needs to be done. My daughter is not going without me. She needs someone to watch after her. Dad, why do you always think you know what's best for me? Because he's misguided. The sad truth is it's men like your father who have put the spirit world out of balance. Holy shit, why is everyone so fucking mean to Tonrock and Tenzin? This man literally wants to help protect his daughter and they're acting like he's gonna harm her or something. Uh, where'd you get the ride? Varric, he's awesome! He also gave me this fancy snowsuit. It's inflatable with an internal heater, emergency beacon, and food ration pouch. I mean, if I get lost, I can survive in this thing for like, like a month. Who wants some freeze-dried cucumber quads? Nobody? Did I interrupt a conversation? Does this sidecar have the capacity for two passengers? Sure does. But, uh, who's gonna drive? Well, what do you know? Looks like- Go away, Mako. I've mentioned before that season two is my least favorite, but the comedy is definitely its strong suit. All the jokes from the episode so far are all funny as shit, especially from Varric and the twins. So, once we get to the South Pole, then what happens? You will open an ancient spirit portal. I'm sorry, what now? So I'm not really making many comments right now because this plot isn't really that interesting to me. Unalak wants to open the portals to balance the spirits and Korra's being completely fucking oblivious to the warnings given by the two most trustworthy people in the whole fucking series and it's gonna come to bite her in the ass when Unalak fuses with Satan. That's the plot for this episode. The writing really isn't that great, so if I'm skipping a bunch of parts and commenting on more trivial stuff like the music or the comedy, that's why. In time. There's a reason the Glacier Spirits Festival ends on the winter solstice. And that's when the spirit world and the physical world are close together. How? Physically? What do you mean close together? I'm gonna try to make some sense of this real quick. So the winter solstice is caused by the shortest day on Earth, right when the hemisphere you're on is farthest away from the sun. The north and south poles are the portals to the spirit world, however we have no clue where the spirit world physically resides, so yeah, even after I try to explain the winter solstice, this line still makes no fucking sense. Close together? What the fuck do you- Uncle, why do you think the dark spirits are following us? Can we not talk about dark spirits, please? My brother doesn't like ghost stories. Don't worry. I will protect you, my feeble turtle duck. Thank you. This line is cute and cursed at the same time. What the hell? So the art style seems to be back on track a little. It's a bit lower quality than season one, but at least everyone's face shapes are back to normal. Tonrock, for some reason, looks like Batman here. Brother, we're being attacked! Okay, this is super confusing. Tonrock says this is 20 years ago, and the attackers are Fire Nation, but the war during Atla ended over 70 years ago, so why the fuck is the Fire Nation here? Was this a raid from an individual armed group, like a terrorist attack, or did the show writers completely fucking forget the timeline of the Four Nations? If it was a government-ordered attack, then why is the Fire Nation in the North? What the fuck are you doing, Zuko? Jesus Christ, is Unalak doing all four of these? These guys are a couple of hundred feet away from him each, that's quite impressive. 
For being the cause of so much devastation, my father banished me from the Northern Water Tribe in shame. You forgot to burn half your face off, though. I can't believe you kept this from me. I was protecting you from the shame I brought on the family. Why do you keep hiding things from me and then telling me it's for my own protection? I'm tired of you protecting me. Cora, this affects you how? You were born in the South, raised in the South, raised peacefully, moved to Republic City, and had all these adventures. Tonrock's banishment had zero effect on you. If you were born in the North and then had to leave and restart your life, it would be a different story, but here you're pissed off for literally no reason. Are you mad that you weren't raised in royalty? Is that the story here? Jesus Christ, Cora did a reverse character arc this season. Wow, the statue room. That's right, Jinora. The most sacred place in the entire Southern Air Temple. Here you will find statues of every avatar who ever lived. Where are your brother and sister? You can't catch me! I'm the greatest air skater of all time! Milo! Okay, that moment was cool. I believe this is the beginning of Jinora's spiritual arc, but that moment was sick. Now what are we supposed to do? There's only one thing to do. We have to turn back. No, the solstice is tonight. We're so close. This mission is too dangerous. We're leaving. No, Dad. You're leaving. Man, fuck you, Korra. Don't worry, sir. I'll keep an eye on Korra for you. Thank you, Marco. So, what exactly were you and my dad talking about? Nothing. He was just worried about you, that's all. You know, sometimes I wonder whose side you're on. The second we switched to season two, all the fuck you Makos became fuck you Koras. Mako's actually doing a great job right now. I don't think he and Asami have talked in a bit, but he's treating Korra really well, and she just gets pissed all the time for no reason at anyone who's genuinely trying to help her, and her uncle, who everyone has voiced distaste for, is the one that she wants to be with because she's dumb as shit right now. She's treating her dad like shit too. He literally just wants to protect his daughter. Light in the dark. <gasps> Cora, you can literally bend ice. Use water bending, you dumbass. initiating physical contact with another woman. In a time of darkness and poorly written plots, the comedy manages to save my mood. Everything you said was true. Oh my fucking god, this has the same resolution as the aftermath. Everyone says that Korra's wrong or Korra needs to stop, but wow! It turns out Korra doesn't need to stop after all. troops doing here? Opening the spirit portal was only the first step in getting the Southern Water Tribe back on its righteous path. There's more difficult work to be done before our two tribes are truly united. Okay, that was actually a pretty good twist. The music did the sharp transition to a minor key again as something bad was revealed. That was great. But aside from that twist, this episode isn't that good either. The plot sucks, Korra's character is getting worse and worse, the two scenes with Jinora were more interesting than the main plot, and the jokes are currently the best part of this season. At least the ending got things rolling a bit more, now it's somewhat interesting. Season 1 had the first two episodes be a little boring, and the third one remains to be one of my favorites, so maybe the two-parter coming up will be super cool. Hopefully. Hey, I have a Twitter, Instagram, and a Discord server. If you would like to see some more casual content and talk to me directly, go follow my socials.
Patron shoutouts! If you want to be an episode ahead of these poorly timed releases, you can support me on Patreon by clicking the link below. Shoutouts to my top patrons, TIEFIRE02, who graduated top of his class in the Navy SEALs and has been involved in numerous secret raids on Al-Qaeda and has over 300 confirmed kills. He's trained in guerrilla warfare and is the top sniper in the entire US Army. Antisol, who ate one flavor blasted goldfish 10 years ago and it's kept him going ever since. He hasn't needed to eat anything at all. Dizzy Payne, who never needs a shower. He literally sweats deodorant. Neferax, who can spit cherry seeds out at velocities faster than a 9mm bullet. And Spectre, who is the only person I know that has listened to Tenzin. Thanks to my other patrons, Daniel Ruan, Drunk on Hugs, Nicholas Schultz, Brockle, and Nuck Tuck. Thanks guys! If anyone else would like to donate, the link is down below.